So, I've been thinking a bit about the beacon. You know, the thing we've been casually using to move between different areas of the outbreak zone. Well, we don't know what it is. Or who built it. Same goes for the funny little vending machines. We think they're safe. Certainly no one's lost anything while using them, but they are something of a peculiarity. They appear to have been cobbled together from machine parts pulled from different time periods in our world. A bit of this from the 50s, a dash of that from the 60s, a sprinkle of something from the 80s. You get the idea. It just doesn't really make sense them being here. Now, I've got a theory, and it is only a theory, that someone or something in the Dark Aether has sent them here to help us. I'm not sure. It's definitely something to look into. I was reviewing Ethereum production reports this morning, and it seems we are running out of storage space. My, my, the worm has certainly turned for energy research ever since we began operations in the Urals. I have more Ethereum now than I know what to do with, thanks mostly to my harvester units. This embarrassment of riches has allowed us to put several new projects into development, not least of which is Requiem's very own teleporter. Oh, it is not quite ready yet, but I would bet my slide rule that it will surpass the crude portals Dr. Peck slapped together in Vietnam. Then there is the new prototype from the weapons lab. Carver asks about it every day, like a child impatient for Christmas. <laughs> uh, patience, Major. You shall have your new wonder weapon soon enough. I wanted to ask, do you have any doubts about the decisions we've made regarding Agent Maxis? Doubts? <laughs> As you know, in the military, doubts rarely do you any good after a decision has already been made. But does that mean you don't have them? We all have doubts, Weaver. It's what makes us good at what we do. It's what makes us human. If we didn't have doubts, we might as well just put a tactical computer program in charge of operations. I'm just worried that our decision to take away the radio she used to talk to the team could render her more... unstable. All the more reason to stick by the decision we made. Regardless of how useful she's been in the past, the last thing we need is instability within our chain of command. She's done so much for us. We wouldn't even be here if she hadn't risked her life to get us the project and station footage. I know. And I know how close you are to her. The most important thing we can do now is to make sure that she gets better. To make sure that she in no way compromises our mission. Of that... I have zero doubts. Thank you, Major. I appreciate your perspective. That'll be all. It may seem like our work in the Ural Mountains has just gotten started, but Langley already considers Operation Threshold a massive success. They said an ongoing operation in the heart of the Soviet Union was impossible. The logistics alone, getting equipment and personnel in and out, was enough of a challenge. But we got creative with the rockets, satellites, cargo drops. We even developed a way to refuel Raptor 1 mid-flight. A lot of dedicated people made this happen. Then, there is the risk of triggering World War III. Fortunately, both sides have a vested interest in keeping these outbreaks from the public. So anything short of a full-scale battle with Soviet forces can remain our little secret. Just be careful out there. What you've accomplished so far has enabled us to significantly catch up with Omega's Ethereum research. We haven't quite closed the gap yet, but I know you won't quit until we're ahead. I thought you'd like to know that our rocket retrieval crew in the North Atlantic have just recovered their 100th payload of Ethereum collected in the Urals. Quite the milestone. Success was far from assured when Operation Threshold was still on the drawing board. Oh, I knew my Ethereum harvesters would function as designed. The hard part was bringing them back home, where we could put it to good use. And we are putting it to very good use. 
My essence conversion modules, on the other hand, require more direct participation from you. The creatures must be lured close and uh, liberated of their essence. It is a rather visceral process, and the subsequent conversion of essence into objects can only be done within the outbreak zone. A dangerous endeavor, yes. But Major Carver assures me you are up to the task. I suppose this is my way of saying we could not have gotten this far without you. No matter what technology we may employ, you are Requiem's most valuable asset. Bravo. Well, we certainly do live in strange times, don't we? First off, I wanted to thank you personally for your work on the recon rover missions. The lessons we're learning are going to prove invaluable as we move forward. As you no doubt witnessed firsthand, the specimens on board the rover were physically transformed after they passed into the dark ether. We're trying to ascertain if this process is similar to what we saw with the creature we dubbed the Mimic, but we're just not sure. Or, were the specimens actually replaced by other objects from the dark ether? If so, does that mean there are now little monkeys lost in there? Either way, it's a horrible thought. The rover did manage to transmit some audio and video recordings during its mission. But I really don't even want to get into that right now. Our working theory is that Ethereum functions in the other dimension, like oxygen does in our own. That would explain why the infected can't move beyond the outbreak zone. If they did, they just wouldn't be able to survive, like a fish out of water. Last thing, do let us know if you start to experience any strange symptoms or feel that you yourselves are um, changing in any way. I honestly wouldn't want you to go through anything like whatever the poor monkeys did. Bless their little furry socks. Hello, Elizabeth. How did you know it was me? I don't know what Strauss and Carver get up to in their personal lives, but as far as I know, you're the only one who wears heels. How are you doing, Sam? Have any more memories come back? About my time in the dark, sir. Only what you already know. It's mostly a blur. Scavenging supplies by day, fighting for my life by night. Not that it matters. It's always dark over there. I am sorry. I really, really am. Have I said that before? If I didn't, I really meant to. If you're here to ask me if I was the one who made all this happen, the answer is no. I didn't make the outbreak sounds. But it almost sounded like you had some control over the creatures at Outpost 25. I may have helped open the door, but that doesn't mean I was in control. How can you be sure if you don't really remember? I'm no stranger to memory loss. My childhood is almost a complete blank. But that doesn't mean I don't know who I am and what I've done. You really don't remember anything prior to the orphanage? Who looked after you? Before? After? Be careful, Lizzie. You shouldn't expect anyone to look after you. Only you can do that. I'm gonna go now, if that's okay. Of course. This is the only way. Hello, Sam. Hello, Weaver. I was hoping we could talk about yesterday. What happened yesterday? You don't remember. It's hard to keep things straight in my mind. Especially with the cocktail of drugs you're giving me. Every day. It's for your own good, Sam. We just want to help. Your... outbursts are a cause for concern. You must understand that. The nurse was only trying to do his job. 
Broken noses will heal. Besides, the medications don't help. They don't stop the dreams. What dreams? What do I dream of? I keep dreaming that I'm in the field. Fighting for something. Over and over again. Sam, you understand that we... I can't let that happen. Not yet. Do you think there's something wrong with me? Is there something wrong with me? Get some rest, Sam. It's important that you feel better. Sam? <sighs> yes? There's someone I'd like you to meet. Someone I think might help you feel better. I am in a white sterile room. We are... I'm not sure who or what you think is going to make me feel better. I've already met Grey, Strauss, and Carver. Who's next? I thought you might appreciate making a new friend. Someone who won't ask you any more questions. Someone who doesn't want anything other than to make you happy. <laughs> Seriously? He's not exactly fluffy, you <laughs> see. She. She's a she. I get that the short hair and large build doesn't look too cuddly, but I thought her being here might be good for you. Some companionship while you recover. Dogs can be very comforting. They're empathetic. They pick up on your emotions. They feel what you feel. So you brought me a Rottweiler. Yes, I brought you a Rottweiler. She's not dangerous. She would never hurt anyone. Why are you saying this? Because I trust you, Sam. And I need you to know that. You don't think I'm dangerous? I want you to work out who you are for yourself. But maybe you should start keeping a diary just to get down your thoughts. What makes you think I haven't been doing that already? Take care of yourself, Sam. And the dog. We'll talk soon. I wish I was there with you. In the Ural Mountains. Fighting back. Trying to make sure we don't lose ourselves completely. But no. I am here. Not where I should be. Not where I want to be. You won't even hear me. They took my radio. I am isolated. Alone. <laughs> no. <laughs> Not alone. I do have a friend. Someone who cares about me. But... I don't even know her name. <laughs> you are doing the right thing. That's what matters. What you do matters. We will catch up. We have to believe that. Despite what Omega are, I know there are good Russians out there. None of us should be defined by our nationality, our race, our gender. Ravanov is someone we can trust. I think I know a way to get in contact with him. He can help us. He can help me. We can do this. Together. Just a moment. 22nd of July, 1984. Commencing a meeting. Valentina, sit, please. You said you wanted to see me? Doctor, how do you find my leadership techniques? Efficient. Effective. You produce results. And you would agree that should be our goal, huh? To produce results, above all else. Of course, Colonel. 
What is this about? It occurred to me. You have said very little about my commandeering of Operatia Inversia. Sir? <laughs> Come now. It was your project. Until I swooped in and snatched it from you. You must be upset. Angry. I am. Above all else, loyal to Omega. While it is true, you have adjusted its parameters. If you believe it is the correct course of action, you have my full support. I already had that. Give me your honesty. You must have questions. Speak freely. Where did I fail? When I brought it to the committee, they seemed impressed. Did my targets present too great a risk? Was my plan too ambitious? Too ambitious? You were not ambitious enough. But that is not a failing of yours. There is much you do not know. My intelligence tells me there is something out there. It is watching our world, looking for a way in. If it finds one, we must be ready. Rest assured, the West will be ours. But first, we must face the wolf at the door. As always, I follow your orders. I am committed to our cause. We were the first. And we are the last. Very good. Without you, my Operatia Inversia would not exist. Always happy to build a solid foundation, Colonel. This better be good. Come back, kid. <laughs> if it is not Gorev, at the very least it will be amusing. Funny. Come over here. Hold this retractor. Almost. Got it. Here. Look at this. An Omega ID badge? Lieutenant Kazakov, Omega Armored Division at Outpost 25. He... He escorted the Ethernauts in one of your tank suits, yes. I saw the blueprint. What is your point? I am confused as well. We have seen this before. We lose men in Dark Ether, they come back with bad skin rash. This Krasny soldat is no different than others we have seen transformed by Ethereum. Ah, see, that's what I thought as well. You're half right. I have never been half anything, Peck. Okay, okay. Now, just a sec. This is one of our men, and the armor is very similar, but it is not the same. Look at the color, the design. This isn't my work. He came back with it. And as far as I know, Ethereum crystals rot your brain. They can't give your car a new coat of paint. Someone's upgrading them. Over there. We keep this between us for now. The Colonel has developed fiery new ideas. They do not wish to add more kindling. Understood. Good. Back. See that this thing is destroyed. Peck, personal log, September 3rd, 1984, 2.35 a.m. <laughs> the witching hour approaches. <laughs> Cheers. It's been nearly two months since my arrival. Work on the inversion warheads proceeds as planned. Operations continue to run smoothly, but... Uh... Oh, damn it all. You're right, Peck. <laughs> you're, you're always right. That's... wait, that's not what this is about. Look, too many sleepless nights. Maybe it's too much time down here in the, in the deep. In the darkness. Yeah, I could go to the surface, but there, there are things up there science just can't explain. The demonic echoes that keep tormenting my staff. An ethereal orb that, I don't know, it cries out with the laughter of children. <laughs> it's enough to drive a man insane. Yeah, uh, not that I'm insane. No, no, I'm holding it together. Nothing to worry about here. 
old noggin's good. Ugh. But we keep trying to bend this reality to work for us. We mine and pilfer for resources to build our weapons and warheads. We really have no clue what we're dealing with, do we? I mean, one second, this place is trying to kill you. The next, it's, it's dropping treasure chests out of the sky. Am I crazy, or, or are we vastly underestimating the powers in play? Uh, I found one of those computers from the, uh, from the dark ether. Omega studied them, but they don't have much to show for it. But I've... I've spoken to someone. Someone on the other side. I haven't told the others. I need to be careful. Keep my cards close to my chest. <laughs> After all, knowledge is power. 16th of August, 1984. Personal log. He visited me again tonight. As I slept, he appeared before me. He is but a shadow to me. So close yet so far. He told me to have faith. I must stay the course. There were recent developments last month that were unanticipated. He assured me that all was not lost. His plan, our plan, is still on schedule. He had new instructions for me. I will see that they are completed. We will be reunited. We will rise again. Our destiny is all but assured. Hello, Beck. It seems like you are finally settling in. Back in Groove, as it were. Yeah. Well, the Groove used to have 20-20 vision. You Americans are so soft and spoiled. Life is full of pain, Beck. After my father died, my uncle took me in. He was cruel did not believe women should have education, made me work in his factory. So what did I do? Every night I snuck into the library and I read biochemistry, microbiology, physics. At 16, I was accepted at university. If I can survive childhood, you can survive a little eye problem. Valentina, I had no idea. How did you convince your uncle to let you go to school? Convince him? When he found out, he tried to imprison me in the basement, so I slit his throat. Ah, uh, uh, of course. Uh, let me assure you, we're making excellent progress. Harnessing those crystalline creatures has certainly sped up development. Is that so? I trust you are taking appropriate security measures. Hey, now. I only lost my eye, not my attention to detail. Is that supposed to be a joke? I, uh... I thought so. Just send me a report on your latest security protocols. And that facility blueprint I asked for. Yeah, sure. Come back, kid. One of my birds said you were looking for me. <laughs> You're goddamn right I was. I need your security teams to prioritize these... these fucking things. I've lost three scientists this week. <laughs> Slow down, William. Take breath. You'll sound like my son when he breaks toy. Now, tell me what his hip, but in calm, rational voice, like adult man. Look, infected I can handle. Undead dogs, sure. Crystalline men, no problem. But these... Damn demon echoes. I have heard of this creature. It can summon friends to its position. Loud scream made of fire. Eh, yeah. Well, one got the jump on Dr. Leonov while he was taking a leak. You ever see that? It summoned a dozen friends while you're in the john? <sighs> Custodial spent two days cleaning up what was left of him. What are 
are you asking for, Doctor? What can I do to make you happy, man? Just... Just have your men do sweeps for these Echoes. The Colonel has accelerated our delivery schedule for the Warheads. We cannot afford any more delays. I am growing concerned, Zol. His behavior since coming here has been erratic. Peck has always had his quirks, you know this. Yes, but he is more skittish than usual. He is talking to himself. He spends all day and night in that silo. Do you suspect Ethereum exposure? Uh, it is hard to say. He has developed a new obsession. You have seen strange computer, yes? Exoscience disassembled one. We are struggling to make sense of it. Its mechanisms are complex. Our American friend talks to it. I have heard of others who do this. It is like moth and flame. They are drawn to it, but do not know why. Apparently, it talks back to back. Does the colonel know this? Yep. He was going to draft report. Hold for now. Give me a few days. Let me investigate. Saves me paperwork. I have little interest in chasing ghosts. Patrick Fedorov, he's writer, Omega Group. Why do I still call myself that? Why do I even keep making these reports? I lost track how long I've been here. Surely, it's been years. There used to be more people here. Lost, like me. So many are gone now. Food for the dragon. Yes, a dragon. But it's also a rocket ship. <laughs> Don't even try to make sense of these things anymore. What I know for sure is the dragon must be fed. It demands sustenance. And then it delivers this, this banquet of souls to the one. I, I do not like to even speak of the one, but his shadow falls over us all. And we must pay tribute. At first, we, we sacrificed the weak. Hmm? Strangers, friends, it did not matter, but then we who still remained we began hunting each other. I have to go. It is hungry again. I have to go! Fedorov, if writer, Omega, still here, still recording. When I first arrived, many things frightened me. I would not admit this, of course. I, <laughs> I was business. I feared nothing. But... Still, anyone who has had to fight and kill a comrade who died a week before and then tells you they felt no fear. <laughs> Yarunda! <sighs> but what disturbed me most in those early days was the ball of light that... <laughs> Sounds like children laughing. What was it? What was it made from? The souls of dead children? Did it... Did it consume... children? Did it use their laughter as a lure? None of the possibilities were good. Bushmoy... He disturbed me. But... You know... I stopped seeing it after a while. I began to think I... I just dreamed it up. And then... Just yesterday... There it was, giggling. And I found I was not scared anymore. I was just sad. I will never again hear that sound for real. I will never have children of my own. I will never, ever know such innocence again. Now I have my answer. I know what the orb is made of. 
is made of heartbreak. It is made of loss.
because I had the best chance of understanding and shutting down that infernal machine. And then Lazarev ordered me sealed inside. I understood what was asked of me. I would never see my wife and daughter again. Still, I saluted and I did my best. This was for my family. My country. For a better future. Even now, if asked again, I would still say yes. So, you are wondering how a tank mechanic from the war survived for decades, trapped in, uh, what do you call it, the dark ether. I often ask myself the same thing. The answers are many. Some I have already given you in my journal. The fort I built, the weapons I found, the, the machines I restored, and of course, my dog, Cinder. But mostly, I was lucky. The rest is because I am Russian. It is in our nature to endure. But I never lost my desire to escape. To come home. To learn what became of my family. As you saw in my journal, I have been able to visit for brief periods, uh, almost like a ghost. But always I am pulled back here. I do not know why I am tethered to this place. I see your people cross back and forth freely. And I burn with envy. There must be a way for me to one day do the same. For now, I will share more of my journal with you. There are things in it you should know. <laughs>